were the days. But if there are deeper sighs for ghosts of the past, it's the White Waltham Air Pageant, also part of the Queen's Silver Jubilee celebrations. Nobody laughed at the Fokker triplane when it first staggered into the air, and they certainly took the sop with Camel seriously. Both came out fighting in World War I. The Prince Charles, himself a pilot, picks up a few points. The Harrier jump jet keeps a balance between very old and very new. The plywood plane of World War II, the Mosquito. The old warplanes may look clumsy and even slightly funny, but in their day, they were giants. It's a tribute to the craftsmanship that went into these historic machines that they're still flying. The Blackburn monoplane of 1912 with its 50 horsepower rotary engine. The SE-5A of 1917. An all-wood, single-seater fighter, much favoured by the pilots of the day. Note the extra machine gun in the top wing. With a top speed of 60 miles an hour, the Blackburn is the oldest British aeroplane still flyable. Two veteran adversaries take the air together, the Fokker triplane and the Sopwith Camel. The last biplane to be used by the RAF, the Gloucester Gladiator. The de Havilland Mosquito came into service in 1941. The twin tail vampire. The old Lancaster bomber still stirs memory. American B-17 of World War II was better known as the Flying Fortress. Flown by TriStar Captain Kitchen of British Airways, the zippy little Super Cricket Tyro plane. So easy to handle, you even have time to wait. The spectacular VC-10 flying at zero feet. The VC-10, one of the most popular planes to go into passenger service. But there's only one way to bring down the curtain on the White Waltham Jubilee air pageant. A fly past by the greatest hero of them all, the Spitfire.